Welcome back to the greenhouse everybody. Today we're out here talking about our aquaponics. We're going from our summer aquaponics tank, a 110 gallon tank down at the southern end of our greenhouse there, and we're going to be turning that into a solar thermal mass heating tank for the winter time. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing, getting my son's fish fed up while he's at school. We're going to go check out all of the projects we got going on today and just the overall fall process in the greenhouse. And Looking down the greenhouse, we're going to be using this large sifter. It's a multi-use tool now. We've got our own homemade foundry aluminum handle on there. So the greenhouse is looking a little different. We're going to be pulling up all of these tables and we've got all this soil to work up underneath them. We're going to pull one, two, three tables maybe. We are officially done with our farmer's market. So we are getting on the planting of crops like all these perennials, all of this yarrow, elderberries. These are basils, but we've got lots of lavender, just random things that I've saved from the market that I want to plant out at our property. And we're dealing with a little green worm invasion. So they ate all of these mustard greens or whatever they were that seeded naturally as we pulled these tarps up. So we let this bed rest for quite some time, six months or so, and we've got some really well broken up soil down there. So we will be planting out this entire bed, getting our covers on, our tunnel covers, our rows. So we're gonna be doing some caterpillar tunnels, doing a bunch of experimenting with heating and stuff like that. So today, what we're looking at is our aquaponics and we have a bunch of leaks in here right now. So these leaks in here and a little bit of time. So those are gonna be coming out. We just pulled a ton of plants out of there. We had acquired ourselves some wild rose hips too so we're gonna hopefully propagate those and you can see I've got a little guppy swimming around in here she came out of this tank here now there is a few more maybe one or two more guppies I can see one swimming right over here somewhere so we're going to turn this pump on because this was our aquaponics pump and we've got it running on this timer here oh boy we can kick it on here. You can hear how loud that dang thing is. We're drawing water up and slowly filling our aquaponics bin so we can get her to drain. So I just unplugged this at the point. This took about three to four minutes to fill this little aquaponics bin up. I've got the power. So I'm gonna hook the power back up to drain this. I just wanted to talk real quick. This darn thing is loud. So this is why we don't use those inline pumps. I like the submersible pumps because they're cooled by the water. They're in the water a lot quieter. So we will drain this out using the natural flow of the bell siphon in there to pretty much drain the entire bin. So I just unhooked the power now that we have the water flowing back in and the water does look dirty but it's actually very clean compared to most years with aquaponics. We only had a few guppies in here just to control the mosquitoes and we were using this just to flow and propagate plants up top here. We're really not necessarily growing crops to eat just to hold over. So as this bell siphon operation is working here, we are drawing all the water up through the bell siphon and down through the tube. We can go check out one of these tanks here. So outside the greenhouse, I've got a few aquaponics bin sitting, ready to get stored up for winter. So inside the greenhouse, that one that is draining looks just like this, and then it has a piece that slips over it. The water goes through these tiny little cuts and notches on the bottom, and then once it fills all the way up, it forms a vacuum, drawing all the water down through here and suctioning it all the way down to about a quarter inch. So. We're doing pretty good when we're draining that and it's getting a darn good drain. We just have to wait for it to drain so it's not so darn heavy. We can move this aquaponics and get on to the heating. So what I'm gonna be doing with these leaks here, shaking all the rocks off them. Look at that root system. That is super cool. So these are a bunch of wild leaks or ramps that we've got. I'm gonna throw them in a bucket of water here. I'm going to end up using the bubbler that is keeping our guppy nice and oxygenated or aerated. 
in this little yellow tank. I'm gonna be swapping that over so we can have a bubbler in these leeks until I'm ready to plant them in the greenhouse. I gotta get a few things cleaned up. And then those leeks are going in here. So if we grow enough of them, we can get a good harvest throughout the winter time. We'll be able to cook with them and eat them throughout the winter. So that is awesome. We've experimented with those and like them, I can hear that this tank is done draining. So what we're gonna be doing is getting this whole system taken off and replacing it with a completely different system. There's our pump system from the aquaponics. Need to make sure I re-secure positive and negative to something that won't catch on fire. So now that we have this tank completely clear of our aquaponics, I need to get the rest of the guppies out of here. We don't want to have any leftover guppies. We want to keep them alive, take them inside. We have seen some pretty darn cold nights, so the fact that those guppies have survived in the greenhouse with not much extra heat, just closing the doors overnight and stuff, I'm surprised to see them alive. So I'm going to go ahead and catch the rest of them in here. Well, we succeeded in catching our last guppy and a whole lot of debris. Now that we've got our guppies out of here, you can see them hiding up under the rag here. Two big female guppies. We pulled about four out the other day, so we had half a dozen all together in there. We're just going to be leaving those in there for right now. Whoop. Pull the aerator back out. That aerator is going to jump right into here and keep these leaks alive just in bubbling cold water for a day or two till we plant them out. So we've got our little window solar heater hooked up and this thing has a little bit of insulation inside. It was all from free or recycled parts that we had and we made this last winter. Did throw a new piece of metal tape along the side here as it kind of weathered and I just wanted to seal it up as best I could to hold that heat in there and really pass it to the copper tubing that's inside this. We can check this out. I have to get my pump set up. So let's check out what we're using here. So we've got this little pump right here. Solar battery backup, nine volt, we push on off, it has a timer, so we can run this 15 minutes on for every hour and then 45 minutes off to collect power in the winter time. This is crucial for us to be able to cycle at a low voltage, low watts I mean, so low watts to these systems allow us to really, really stretch them out, especially in the winter when it's cold and the light is very minimal. So we've got our little pump here. This has been used for six to seven years. I kind of cleaned it up a little bit and this has worked awesome. We got a little downsizer and I say we use this for years and I started with using this for our compost heating in our small compost heated greenhouse. A very small trickle of water passively heating up in compost coming in and heating up the floor. That is a very, very old video when we first started this channel. So we're gonna use this same pump to move water through this little solar window heater. Last year I used a small pump similar to this one and I ran it straight up to the top here and pump the water using gravity. So what I'm gonna do this year is run it from the bottom and then it is going to spew out the top here and drain back in. So I can use the natural flow of the water heating up because it was wanting to rise and I was having kind of some back pressure where forcing the water through as it's creating steam bubbles and stuff. So let's check out the heater itself. You can see where our copper comes in and then runs straight and then we've got 50 foot of copper all bundled up and some nice metal backdrop in there, some steel plating and some insulation behind that and some on the walls and then it comes right back out and drains right here. So we are going to try and feed it from here and push the water up and it should help it as it heats up throughout the day. So first things first, let's test this little pump out here. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it in the water and then all we have to do is click our on button and we've got water flowing. So we can bring everybody down here. We've got a decent flow of water. Now this is just regular aquarium tubing. It seems to last quite a while, but 
it does get algae in it. So the only piece I had left over, I'm going to get some more tubing, but this one had algae, dried algae in it. But the whole purpose of this test was just to make sure our pump was flowing. So we're going to get up here and hook this thing up and see what we can do. hose to the pump hooked up there to our tube down to the pump let's turn this thing on and see if we can't get it to operate here so I see the water shoot up through it while we're waiting for this to flow let's trace the cord out here the black cord and all that system runs off of this tiny little solar panel there's our 100 watt this is like 15 watts or something at the max Powering that little system we have right here on our radio. I see a few drops coming out All right, we've got ourselves water. I'm just collecting So I'm just collecting some water to see if we have raised the temperature now I let this sit for about 10 minutes and collect a little bit of Sun here. It has been sitting in the Sun Also, I'm gonna see what the temperature is. So ambient temp is about 71 on the ground and inside this cup, we're sitting 82.8, 83 degrees, 83 degree water inside there. And our tank is sitting, we're sitting about 65 maybe, about 65, halfway between 60 and 70 there. So 65 to 83 off of 10 to 20 minutes of being set up and operating. So on average last winter, we transferred 20 to 55 degrees from the start temp to the end temp. And I think running it backwards from the way I built it and allowing the heat to actually flow it is going to work the best because we're still putting decently warm water sitting out of there. That probably is about 75 to 80 still. We're putting some good heat out of that box at a small flow rate. So we're able to transfer some heat slowly over time but if this thing runs for a decent portion of the day on a warm day this thing will definitely throw some heat into this tank and will have some good thermal mass just as a passive autonomous system that acts while i'm not in the greenhouse this operates on its own very simple to use and very important part of the greenhouse it's a very important prerequisite to winter here this is something that we always do i'm going to set up things that work for me and work on their own as opposed to me having to come flip a switch or plug it into the wall so we have this whole entire solar powered system behind me check that out there so we've got this whole solar system that was running our aquaponics. We're going to have a free 100 watt system that is not operating anything, allowing us to do some more solar heating experiments. I'm gonna try and build a box for oil heating. So if anybody has any interesting ideas, we've got a couple different oils we've been looking to use. Rice bran oil is one, regular vegetable oil or canola oil. Those all kind of gel up. So I want something that is going to have a good freeze temperature and be able to heat up quickly and be recirculated and transformed for heat into the greenhouse from outside. I'm going to try and run some lines from outside for that oil heating system since I don't have to worry about water exploding. We used vegetable glycerin for a solar heater last year and we may try that again. So lots and lots of free heating experiments on the passive and solar side coming along with our compost heating and everything down by the stove. One thing I have to do is clean this tank. I've got to get any gunk out of there. I used our net to try and get that guppy and I caught a bunch of junk from the bottom but I will probably end up draining it most of the way down cleaning it up and getting it full of clean water to be used for heating this winter what made me decide to not use this 12 volt inline pump that is an external use non-submergible so I like the use of this it's awful loud and it draws quite a bit of energy but also this has a very high flow rate it flows more than we want to and we would have to really downsize it you can see the trickle that we're heating up right here. It's very, very minimal, maybe a gallon per 
hour. Heating up maybe a gallon per hour to this 110 gallon tank might not seem like much, but we are raising the temperature slowly throughout the day. Even on a cloudy day, we're still heating up this water by pulling it up and running it through this box. Another reason we use that little pump is the flow rate. We wanted to have a slow flow rate to pick up the heat inside the box so we weren't pushing it too fast through. Same with our compost heating. We want a decent flow rate. So for our compost heating, we really only want to flow about a gallon per minute. And I'm thinking that this is maybe closer to a gallon per half hour. So maybe two gallons an hour, I can assume or estimate this would flow. I can actually do a test on it and fill one up and see what the actual flow rate is because I'm going to do some more heat sampling from this and give some data on how well this actually works and really kind of get into the numbers on it and the BTUs we can create. So that is pretty much it for this video. Our little guppy's got to go inside. We've got a bunch of work to do. Hear that train down there. When it's not in full glare, you can pretty well see in to the heater there. We want our solar heater at 45 to 60 degrees to the sun to get the best thermal energy in the winter time. So we always try and pay attention to that. You can see from our solar panel that's about the same. It's trying to get the most amount of energy as the sun is waning in energy here. So I'd like to thank everybody for joining me today in this video in the takedown of our aquaponics and the discussion upon swapping these systems and the potential of having just one thermal mass tank in the greenhouse. You have so many uses for it. As long as you clean it up, you can reuse it for many, many things from aquaponics to heating, small ponds, all types of water features in the greenhouse the more water in the greenhouse the better off you are especially in winter time so i'm going to let this run we will bring a data video on this little solar window heater absolutely free materials this costs nothing to set up it was all free recycled material so i'd like to thank you guys again and i will see you in the next one